match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat children. Pray. All right. We back. Yep. Motherfucker Tough Talk Podcast. Uh, I am your host, Phil Hunt. Here with my co-host, Ibrahim Khalif. Say what up. Yo, what up? All right. Uh, yeah. Every other week, we hear... You always tell me to say what's up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a kid. I, I know I, I'm the co-host. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say what's up. Say hi. What the fuck? Shut the fuck up. Yeah, shut the fuck up. That's what you sounded like uh, Bernie Mac. Yeah, like, what the fuck? When he was talking about uh, Kings of Comedy, when he was talking about women. Slow down. (laughs) Turn left. (laughs) You're going too fast. Speed up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, ain't that funny? Didn't that bit predate GPS? Yeah. (laughs) Where we was. Uh, So where the fuck was we? Uh, now, I was saying about GPS. I was saying uh, that whole bit that you were just talking about with Bernie Mac. I said it predated GPS. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bernie would have. Bernie would have hated the GPS. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny to have a to actually have a GPS? Yeah, voice, actually like, be Bernie Mac. Yeah, yeah. That, I ain't that scared shit. of you, motherfuckers. Yeah, uh-huh. That shit play soon you as the, the cops. Motherfucking neighborhood. <laughs> as soon as the cops pull up, I ain't scared <laughs> of you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Like, nah, Bernie, this ain't the time for that. <laughs> God bless Bernie, man. Uh, it sucks that we never got a whole hour from Bernie, man. Nah, never. I rewatched I'm, Kings of Comedy the other day. and I remember yeah. people was debating that shit. Like, oh, he never did a, an hour. He never did. I'm like. Well, yeah, we never got a whole hour from Bernie. We can't even get a whole podcast. Nah. <laughs> somebody keep blowing up my God, phone. And that's what damn. the fuck people do. We be sitting here the whole time and nobody else say shit. Yeah, <laughs> the whole time. The whole nobody time you wait. Look, nothing. we was we're sitting here for a minute. Setting yeah, up. we was here for twenty straight nothing minutes, happened. chopping it up. As soon as no nobody called. But yeah, Bernie, you rewatch that set and boy, that that joke about the bus driver, man, in perfect order. Mm-hmm. <laughs> perfect order. Even the order of that show was perfect. Like. But I heard when they shot it, it was in um, reverse order. I heard that 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 the actual tour, Bernie would either op- he was like initially opening up, or like the second comic, and yeah. then when they made the movie, they put him at the end. Mm-hmm. But they say during the tour, he was in the beginning, and like it, he was hard to follow. Like yeah. it, like nobody wanted to follow him. Oh and yeah, eventually, yeah. They ended up eventually. The and order Steve up. is a perfect host. Like mm-hmm. Steve to ease everybody in. Cedric gets. Almost lost in the sauce on that one because Steve does the most time because he's the mm-hmm, host, it feels mm-hmm. like. And then, but people forget two, two jokes from Cedric on that that are classic. Mm. One is delicious. <laughs> no, <laughs> I ain't about to be no, calling no, no grown, grown man ass delicious. man delicious. Yeah. And the other the, one that the I running, see, the I see that redone so, so much times, by these yep. kids now. Yep. And they're doing a sketch, and it's mm-hmm. <laughs> ain't it crazy how mm-hmm. uh, you know once one black person start running, everybody start running, mm-hmm. and it's just like and they, they've been I don't even that ever since. I don't even think they know where it came from, nah, which is kind of funny because sometimes you know as comics with the you know whole like you know Social joke media. thieving and stuff, mm-hmm. it's like you know can you even blame a uh, a kid that's twenty that never watched. Dude, it, that's that's become surreal. That there's so many uh, people that we're surrounded by that don't know simple shit about what's what's going on inside of what happened before them. Like, yeah, you know, and I, you know I, what? I was at a comedy show, and these, I'm gonna just say whatever. Millennials mm-hmm. were saying George. Uh, they were saying that Trump. Oh, Trump is the worst president ever. He's the worst president ever. So I asked, I said, how old were you when 9-11 happened? Right. And they were like, one guy said I was five. The Another oh, one said wow. I was in the fifth grade. I said, dude. I said, we had George Bush before Trump. <laughs> George right. W. Bush. I was like, nobody's worse than him. Yeah. Oh, no. Trump. I said, no, Trump sounds bad. George Bush was Well, bad. what it was with him was, with Trump is, you can halfway excuse some of this shit because you go... He's not a politician. Right. George spent his entire life, life in training politics. to be a politician. Right. And was still that damn bad. And hey, he was a cokehead like a motherfucker. Which I was <laughs> laughing the other day about. Do you remember his brother Jeb Bush oh, Jeb, yeah. tried to run? Oh, yeah. And Barbara Bush had to come out 
and try to help him. Oh, and yeah, I said, yeah. boy, you know some shit bad when your mama come out and try to help Quaker you get a Oats, job. Quaker Oats, <laughs> yeah, that was her dying wish. Please give my other son a chance. <laughs> Anytime your mom come out. Nobody, forgot, like, about, mama, nobody forgot about Florida motherfucker. Mama, like, go back, <laughs> back in the house. house. Yeah. Trump made him look like shit when he was running. Right? Because he, he running. He was... Well, it's funny was that whole Republican, uh, that whole uh, ticket that was running, running yeah. for Republicans, they, it was like Trump just unleashed a roast battle on everybody. Oh, yeah. He he's, won a big-ass roast battle and he became the, the nominee. He's practically a mixtape rapper, and people don't get that. They keep keep sharing the bad <laughs> shit he says and his stuff. Like, don't y'all get that this dude is a villain? Yeah. He's a heel. Yeah. He literally was in the WWF. He were, and he's in the Hall of Fame. Right, right. right. Like, uh, it's almost like, uh, and I mean, it's a joke that's obviously been done a thousand times mm-hmm. or everybody has said it at some point, but it's one of those uh, things where like they were saying for Hitler of like, Like, if they had to just let him be a painter, and Trump's was, remember, he wanted to be an NFL owner. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> and they were like, if they just would have let him be an NFL, NFL owner, that's funny. he would have never came over this way. You, but you mentioned, uh, we were talking about jokes earlier, and where the origins of shit, mm-hmm. and that made me think of something. I got in a little little bit of a Facebook beef with a comic uh, oh. recently <laughs> over, over a joke. And uh, I, I don't think people I, I was explain, surprised. I was surprised by that. explain the rules. I don't think people have explained the rules to a lot of comics like the way I was taught. You, if a comic is on stage and they're saying something and it sparks an idea from your head, you don't then go do that joke because that's really a tag for his joke. And you write that down and say, hey, here's an idea. Maybe you can go left or go right with that one. Right. And you give that to them, and that kind of helped keep things more of original. Right. Whereas when everybody is sparking ideas from everybody else, then everything seems derivative, and we all sound the same. That's kind of what's happening, I see, with the... um with social media, it's like you see a lot of that. That's why at some one point I had to get off of uh, Facebook for yeah. a period because it seemed like everybody was saying the same shit, mm-hmm. and I don't like to do what anyone else is talking about. Or even if I do speak on a subject, it's going to be different. But you start noticing when I go to mics, when everyone literally has the same punchlines, yeah. and I'm like, and it's all because of social media. Social They're media and memes those memes and all are that shit comfortable mm-hmm. and accessible. To where everybody feels like they funny. But right. the whole thing with me and my thing is current events, which, you know, anybody can do a current event topic. Obviously, if there's a mass shooting or, you know, a big current event, then everybody's kind of talking about talking that about thing. It. So you can't take ownership of it. Right. But at the same time, but with social media, people. even it's like, yo, give people space. So Where's the up? Facebook beef thing was... I told a joke about Rush Limbaugh, which I just had the thought that, you know, he had announced that he got, what was it, lung cancer? I guess I didn't, I didn't and I, 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 I couldn't get past how funny it was that Rush Limbaugh announced about that his people. lungs were black <laughs> in February. Yes. So, of course, I made the post. Likes come rolling in or whatever, a few comments. And a few hours later, I see that a comic, another comic, tagged me in his comments to say, like, you inspired you ins- and yeah. said, yeah, and quote, you inspired this post. I look up at the post and it's literally he replaced the word February with Black History, Black History Month yeah. and changed, you know, his announced his lungs were black to what was it? His lungs so are celebrating, celebrating Black, Black History, History Month. And I'm just going, hey, man, uh, you know, this is the same joke. Then people started comment to say like oh this is the world's greatest joke which to be <laughs> fair to be fair and you standing there like i didn't even feel like it was that, it great. Was that great and that's why i threw it out there because I, I don't really do a whole lot of shit that i want to keep but, on facebook or on twitter or any of that things because i've had that happen too many times you come in the show and you gotta wonder did that comment get that from me mm-hmm. or maybe i should shut the fuck up more you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah, I kind of threw it out there, and it felt like a throwaway to me of like, 
didn't everybody else see this already? Right, right, right. And, you know, you're always halfway expecting when you put something up for someone to say, hey, I did that four days ago. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, fair enough. But, yeah, he just thought it was cool to do that. (laughs) Then everyone starts, like I said, it almost felt like someone was playing an inside joke on me being like, hey. This is hilarious. Oh, man, make this shareable. Yeah. Oh, man, I, one yeah. dude was like, yo, I got lung cancer, but this shit would, made my yeah, day. That's the one. Uh, I bet you that's the one that really got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yo, this, I'm like, reading, yo, this is a killer. Like, I'm <laughs> reading, literally. I'm reading the comments like, damn, I'm out here curing cancer with jokes. And this motherfucker basically the credit. copied and pasted my joke, which it's almost a, uh, it's a, yo. uh. I'm going to tell you what's so funny was I was getting ready to... Because I'm cool with the dude. Right? No, I got I'm love cool for the comic, dude, actually. Dude, and then man. we kind of pieced it up. Right. Because right? I, I see how so, that could happen. What's so funny was I was I saw yours first. So I liked it or laugh faced or whatever. And I'm going through my timeline. And I read it. And I was getting ready. I was like, didn't I like this already? Yeah. It, it literally popped in my head. And I looked and I saw it was him. I was like... What are you and doing? I didn't like it because I'm like, Cause I'm like whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, wait, and, did and, this and, already happen? And that was what threw me off about it was one that he pushed like on it. So it was kind of confirming like, oh, OK, I just saw this here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when he tagged me to say, you know, inspired by I'm halfway going, but you can't. That's like if I took your coat from you and said, yo, you inspired me to rock this, this like you, you know I what like I'm saying? Style. Thanks for the inspiration. I'm glad it's you hilarious. gave me the idea. It's almost like somebody robbing you and saying thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that shit and, was funny. And, and, and telling you, like, you, you ever see, I, it was an episode of Oz where the homie in prison and he took the dude's shoes, but he said, say I can take them. And he made him do it in front of the guards. Mm. And it was just like, damn, damn. man, just take my shoes, but right, don't, yeah. don't make me say, hey, man, you can yeah. have these. Yeah. These are your size. Like, damn. That was, that was funny. Like, so, I, got, I got lung cancer, and this is hilarious. It's so That was yeah. the last straw. I was like, that motherfucker. I, I progressively got more heated because at first I was just like, hey, man, the share button That's exists. Funny. You could always just press share. And then when I kept seeing the comments roll in, like I said, I'm like, is somebody playing an inside joke with me? Because I, like I said, I really truly didn't even but think the joke I, was that damn yo, good. But that's why I'm paranoid about putting shit up on the internet, yeah. man. Like, I just recently seen um, a comic. So what, what do you think about this? I just recently seen a comic put up, uh, he put up a special came out. And one is his, his. I have a Me Too joke, and his Me Too joke is it. It takes a similar angle, but it's not this. Our guest is here, J C Best is yeah, here. Man. What is it? J C knows best. J C Best. What do we say? The J C knows best is like a brand, you know what I'm saying? But um, you know that hasn't been uh, lit for five years now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just okay. just a regular name, J C Best. Just J C Best. best. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Because once you had the nose best, people always felt like this nigga don't know shit. Right, right. You, you opened yourself <laughs> up to critique. Almost. Oh, I fucked myself a lot. Niggas didn't like me a lot. Niggas. Like somebody was talking about talent one day, uh, and they were just saying like, "That's real pretentious." And they were so upset about it. And I'm like, they're like, talking about talented talent, talent. Yeah, yeah, funny ass funny dude. Sad. But yeah. but they were saying like, He's when you give yourself that name, it opens yourself up to huh. critique. Yeah, but I mean, I will take it as you bet on yourself, though. Who nah, nah. Fuck? When you fuck say that. something, talent, like, and you know me, talent, I, I got mad love good. for talent. Talent yeah. didn't put and, me and, up, and yeah. talent do all types of shows. One of the New York kings of comedy, if y'all don't know, uh, talent. The comedian, look right. him up. What, what's his catchphrase? He always saying, "It's just, uh, it's comedy. just comedy. It's just comedy." And he don't pops take any of this shit personally. But Tell nah, I, someone took issue oh, with his man. name. Was what it was saying, and it was saying it was pretentious. And I was like, "Oh, I, I, I saw what they was talking about because they was just saying." Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. On a first, as soon but as I you take they, it in, but, but once you see him perform, you're like, "All right, fair enough." The nigga's it's talented. talented. People don't remember it's talent was in uh, Sunset Park. Remember yep. that shit? Yep. It's time to get live. It's time to get lit. Terrence know, Howard. You don't know Sunset Park? That's one of Terrence Howard's movie. first movies. Yeah. Wow. Remember he was Spaceman. Mm-hmm. I like science, yeah. mister. Mm-hmm. That was talent's role? Science role? is my no, no, favorite no, no. subject. Uh, no, but was talent another, was in the movie. Uh, in the movies. Uh, Terrence basketball Howard. Player. That was before he was saying Maine every five seconds. So fucking uh, talent was the first 
comic because I'm not easily starstruck by anybody. Talent was the first comic that I saw face to face that I was like, oh shit. Yeah, you was like, I think I've ever met Because I grew up watching, watching him. him. Right. You know right. what I mean? So I was like, oh shit. I met him at Yonkers Comedy Club. I was doing mm-hmm. his uh, comedy festival he had did a few years back. And you like, shit was really I was like, real. Yeah. I, like, I've sat in front of all types of other people and I don't give a fuck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Talent was the first with, one where I was like, fuck oh Fuck with shit. talent. And his, his son's Talent. doing comedy now. His son's I met good, his son. Good, good he works at Caroline's. I put, I put JC Knows Best because I do believe the shit I say. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, Phil, I see this ignorant shit you post, and I don't really see a lot of the shit you post, but I know mm. the real niggas I fuck with, they post some shit that they believe. Right, right, right. You know, so you could be funny and all of that, but I can't imagine niggas out here just like trying to be funny and not have an actual position. To well, stand that's, what that's what I get lacking. mad about sometimes when I hear people, I say, but do you believe that shit? Yeah. Because when I get a death threat, I'm going to have to stand. I'm going to say, yo, meet me downstairs, motherfucker. I don't know I if meant, I'll say that, no, but I do got to stand on my Because I meant that shit. Mm-hmm. So it ain't no backing away from it to me. Mm-hmm. And, what is a death threat anymore? And, that's, and, just, that's trolling and shit. Be, nah, <laughs> you can't be fearful really of death threats, Nick. Trolling. You crazy. Because somebody could argue you was trolling to say that shit. So... Well, you, I'm you a kind of know the reaction. I'm a troll. Do. You're an admitted troll, well, uh, nigga. Do you know me? Yeah, you know, nigga, you know right. me, right? But I know people. People almost, and that's what I look at at a certain point when certain people say certain shit. I say to myself, "Yeah, but shouldn't you expect that from him?" Right. Like mm-hmm. I don't have the same expectations for everybody. Right. And mm-hmm. even when people get mad at shit, I say, I say to myself. But don't you know who yeah. I am yeah. and what I'm about at this yeah. point? Which Chappelle almost dropped dime on us a little bit. I love Chappelle, but the uh, Mark Twain speech, did you catch it? I mm-hmm. caught because he, he, yeah. He's genius, but he was saying, he said, you know, I know comedians come up here and they say a lot of things and y'all go, mm-hmm. oh, they're just joking. And but he like, said, I really hang out with these and motherfuckers. They mean and they shit. mean all that yeah. shit. That's, oh, I didn't yeah. see him yeah, say yeah. that. Yeah. I'm so glad he did but say he that. But he said even if the, he got racist comics that he know that may be racist. He said, I still oh, I chop I it up with that. him because he said it's all within the art form. Right. It's, it's, and it's, that's it's, what it's supposed to be about. If shit's funny, and you got funny. You got to have something that you're willing to die on the hill for. You know what I mean? You're going to say some shit, you're going to be like, listen, I believe, you know, like you said, I'm going to stand on it. That's right. my joke. That's my angle. Like, that's uh, the way I think. And well, that's what, like, that's, uh, that's my approach. So same expectations. Uh, y'all familiar with Kodak Black, right? Of course. Yes. And his internet antics, which by the way, <laughs> I missed uh, when he came out and said, "What did he come out and say?" Oh, he said he wanted to. He said he wanted to smash Young and May. That was first. Yeah. But and then old girl amongst a bunch of shit. Then right after Nipsey he, passed, he, he said he something like, "You know, what yo." What did he say about Nipsey? He didn't say nothing about Nipsey. He yeah. he said, "Yo, Lauren London, da 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 da." You know, you oh! know where he took yeah. it. Right that, after, oh, like, right but after when that. people that, got that is troll. Right after, love. Oh, that's too much. No, no funny, on. not a dead. But but you know what? The the young and shit is funny. Okay, because oh, yeah. anytime a dude talk about fucking dykes, that shit is funny <laughs> to me. Yeah, and, you know, and why not? Is it gay? She still got a vagina, but I'm gonna say it is some type of gay as shit. Because it, like <laughs> to, to me, you can't, like the way he backed up off that shit. <laughs> Come on, bro. Okay, you so, can't be out here fucking so, so bitches you know what's that's not funny, feminine. I'm what's sorry. Funny about Kodak Black saying that is that he's in jail and I feel like the first thing he did when he got to prison was stick a picture of Lena Waithe on the wall with a piece of gum. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like the fact that that's his type is very funny. <laughs> Kodak got two types. It's widows and, and, widows and, and, and what do you call them? And butch? And, uh, uh, and by the way everybody, this is a disclaimer. Uh, JC actually identifies as on the spectrum. Uh, not the re- <laughs> not the special <laughs> ed spectrum. Not the, not the special. I caught myself. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't feel like getting spectrum. Cancel before I start. But only only, on, ni- only niggas on the rainbow would, spectrum. Only niggas would make an announcement like uh, uh, announcement like that on the podcast. <laughs> All the white podcasts I've done, they just talk. We talk, talk like talk? regular people. <laughs> niggas got to be like, all right, guys, wait a minute. Wait uh, a minute. No. We, we got to make a small announcement, PSA, if you will. <laughs> this nigga be into some fruit booty shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, just, you know what I'm saying? Nah. Uh, JC JC is 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 unique to me for a few reasons, but oh, we're, we're gonna get into comedy. But since we got onto the spectrum, we'll, I'll say this: I remember probably in like two thousand and like seven or whatever. I was yeah. doing, doing my little STD check or whatever and whatnot. Nice. Now you know on the forum. 
They start off regular, easing you into it. Hilarious. So what have you been engaging and, in? And, real and crazy. it starts off normal, you know. How many partners have you had? And then it goes, hey. Math. Have, <laughs> are, are you gay? Yes, check are yes you or no. Yeah. You check no. You look yeah. at the next box mm-hmm. and it says, have you had sex with any men? You right. check no. You right. move to the third going. box and it says, have Trans. any men had sex with you? <laughs> and you like, yo. So I remember looking. <laughs> I remember looking at the bottom of the this form, nigga, no. and it said MSM. And I asked the girl that was the nurse or whatever right. that was checking me out. She says, "I said, what is MSM?" And yeah, she said, "It stands shit. for men who sleep with men." I said, "Now you <laughs> asked if I was gay." No. She dialed it back and said, "There are some men." Who wouldn't say they're gay, but they sleep with men, and I was confused as fuck. Now, not mind you. Oh, I thought you were talking about something. Else. I'm a like military MS, child. MS, MS, MSM was. She oh. said it stood for men who sleep with men. Oh, I didn't know. So I it was an it was acronym. Oh, okay. And I was confused because I said, "Well, ain't that the same thing as it's gay?" All you the just other questions. asked yeah, me yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. She goes, "There are a lot of men who sleep with men that would not say they were gay." And right. I said, "Okay, exactly. fair." I was confused. Now, mind you, what a great point. I grew up in between Indianapolis and Valdosta, Georgia. Military kid. So I never really met. Now, granted, I met some gay people, but it was very obvious. Choir directors and shit like that. Right. Right. (laughs) It was very obvious that they were. So then when I met you and I remember you kind of coming out, I remember dudes hitting me up to say, yo, you heard about JC? And I'm like, wait, what? I remember you kind of had to put the post out there to say, yo, that's my lifestyle. That's how I live. Mm. Because you don't appear it and you don't sound it as stereotypical as that sounds. When I tell niggas I identify as straight, you know, I get laughed at and shit. But they don't understand it because, I don't know, I think... um, I think maybe we just not ready. It's just that simple. And I'm not mad at niggas who ain't ready. You know, my family ain't ready for that. They they, they be roasting. Like, we be roasting. It's, it's well, see, rough. to me, the jokes are almost, jokes are almost a way of being transparent. Right. Unless you know, unless you know hey, exactly motherfucker, right. I know about you. Right. And it's cool. Right. Because right. people get mad, and even now, uh, the presidential election, uh, Budigag, how you say his name? I don't F- fucking know. Budichich. Budichich. I just found out he was a fool. Is... I didn't know that. I thought he was right. He's, uh, <laughs> people are trying to blame the black vote. People keep saying they fear that he won't win because Black religious voters won't vote for him. And I'm saying to myself, y'all gonna stop aiming homophobia at us. Right. I can remember back to, you know, the 90s growing up. MTV mm-hmm. played the movie for, was it Matthew Shepard? Right. And the white boys took him out in the woods in Texas right. and drug him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For being gay. Right. And then even uh, Post Nightclub where the motherfucker shot, what, 60 people? Right. He broke yeah. the record. Yeah, yeah. right. Atlanta. That was, a uh, uh, you know, uh, was he like an Indian or no, a, 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 what we would call an Arab, hell. I guess Arab. Corner store. He was corner know. store. <laughs> Bodega. He was corn not bodega Spanish. He was corner store. Some of them niggas be Arab too. Then. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know what they are. Uh, ambiguously brown folks. So yeah, when when they try to aim that gun at us, I'm always like, yeah, but that wasn't us that did all that shit. So Black people, we I mean, make jokes and we're transparent. And right. and you know what? We'll we'll at least tell you where we stand, one right. way or the other. I don't mean niggas is homophobic. I don't even know if we know shit like that. We don't be thinking like that. Like, niggas don't think in homophobic terms. We just, if do we fuck with you or do we not fuck with you? And I think just with the, some of the gay shit, niggas might not be ready to, you know, embrace or like the whatever. I don't yeah. really, but I don't think they hate me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's still love there. It's just like love from afar. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? And I can't be mad at that, bro. That's how my family is. And I'm not mad at them, bro. I'm not. I don't fuck with gay niggas like that. Okay? <laughs> I just fuck. I just fuck gay niggas like that. Bro. Okay. I don't give a fuck okay. with gay niggas. So you're a, you a hitter and quitter. Yeah, huh? yeah bro. You're trying to fucking meet have me introduce me to your family. I was nigga. gonna I say wham bam thank you ma'am, mm. but I guess this is wham bam <laughs> thank, thank you, you fam. man. <laughs> thank you fam. <laughs> Alright, uh, mm. nah, uh, yeah. And his, see, I know JC, so we're giving you a little backstory, obviously. Uh, you used to be, and this is interesting for both of y'all because my ass is supposed to be Christian. Christian's my middle name, mm. but I don't really 
identify do. with. I ain't gonna say that I don't identify with it because I believe in something. You believe in Jesus, nigga? I just don't be doing the do. But do if you that in makes Jesus? sense. Something yes. is Jesus. But I wanted to say this for you. Well, no, not per se, but that's why I'm saying I'm a half ass Christian. Okay. I that's hate like that it's most, my middle name like because most of the fucking... I don't do. Yeah, everybody has it. But Jesus is the thing. Do you believe in Jesus? That's it. Uh, nigga, do you got some rubbing oil or something? You gonna anoint me? <laughs> if but you nah, don't believe in Jesus, you ain't Christian. I was period. saying this because Ibrahim, you Muslim. Mus- Muslim, Muslim do you yeah. say Muslim or Muslim? Muslim. I, Muslim. I be feeling ignorant, He's like I don't real, know shit. The real shit. And then you used to be a preacher, right? Yeah, man. In a Christian organization. Really? How long wow. were you a preacher? Uh, three years. Three, three years. years. Yeah. How similar to comedy is preaching? Yo, it's the same shit. And I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> when you be nervous as a comedian, if you could just think about serving niggas. Like, actually, niggas came to laugh. Come on, man. Don't think about yourself. Think about, I came to fucking serve it's these niggas. It's so you many comics that I'll say, I, that's a great fucking point. It's so, so many comics I see, and my frustration comes from watching the audience squirm in their seat of just like... Did you just walk on stage and tell everybody you was depressed and then start right. reading the list of your fucking mm, problems? Can't do that. Like, they ain't come to get that shit. Like shit. I they got I problems. I mean, that's crazy. Man, that, it's that, one thing yeah. if you're doing it at a mic because you're trying to work it out. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, and I'm not judging it if it's one joke, but I've seen people Old literally sex, yeah. run down some shit that it's like, fam, I know they say this is therapy, Yeah, but not but literally, not literally like, therapy. Yeah. But if you do it right, it is therapy. You hear on some author uh, blank shit. It, it, it is therapy if you do it right. And recently I had two niggas that I used to preach to from my old church, two pe- people that I used to, like, I wouldn't say I healed. One of the dudes was a friend and I was kind of counseling him with his marriage. But these were people who went to my church and that shit was surreal, you know, yeah. to see them like almost full circle because it is similar. And I felt that I was nervous. I was like, oh, fuck, these like this is the first time I've actually had people I used to fucking like tell the word of God to and they come to see my dirty act this is but it's kind of the same like I it said you're healing, you healing in a different it is, manner it is but it's I'm but real it's, dirty right now and it was completely okay. the antithesis of what got you, you were, what you bro. preached about very conservative church mainly so did you do better your first time preaching or your first time on stage uh, I've been bombing my whole life, nigga. Is that it? Can I, can I, you know what I fucking All my saw? life. That's like the yeah. Nipsey Hustle. Grinding yeah. all my life. Uh, bombing all I've my been life. Bombing all my life. <laughs> all my life. Uh, yeah, as a preacher, no, actually, I was really good, man. I was really good because I did touch people and I just connected with niggas. And um, I was, I preached strong like a young pastor who hasn't lived yet. And that was what's crazy, because how old are you, man? And I mean... I became a preacher at 22, mm. and uh, I'm in my 30s now, you know what I'm saying? 22, about? that's the first year you yeah. can drink, or the second year yeah. you can drink. Yeah, God yeah. damn, what could you didn't even know, tell a motherfucker didn't at know a goddamn thing. So I'm in the Bible, and I knew the word of God. I read it, you know, front to back. And I really did have a good understanding of the, the law, the prophets, Old Testament, New Testament, and I could preach my ass off. But nigga, I didn't know shit. Yeah, so, life-wise. You yeah, almost didn't even know no yourself. You yeah, didn't even know yourself. So, so life came, and it really, for like five, six, seven, eight years, it popped me. Pop, 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 pop to me getting divorced, to me having, you know, these sexual feelings, you know, to me having to start from scratch. You know what I'm saying? And it, it was a real rough situation. And then I started doing um, stand-up, and it was, like, almost cathartic. It saved my life, really, nigga. You know, because yeah. I really did need to get this shit out. And by the time I started 30, I was just more honest, bro. I was, yeah. I was in front. It was, I was like, I ain't that nigga no more who gonna fit and act like he gonna tell you the word of God. He ain't even living right. Nah, I'm gonna go on stage, yeah. and I'm gonna just be raw, and this is what it is, boo-boo, to the point where I probably overshoot. You know, gotcha. I'm starting to just learn how to pull it Dial back. Dial that back even. But I was like, nah, I, we finna be real this time Finding around. Finding that nigga. balance. Mm-hmm. So I just got to think, you know, you know, connecting with niggas. And it do. It, it, man, it's so the same similar same to shit. preaching. It's and we might as well shit. pass that collection plate it's around. It's the same shit. I, I feel like I would be good at preaching. Yeah, you, you remember them games like, uh, what was the shit? 
uh, rock star where they would play the uh, play, the, play the a certain key, key and you yeah, had the yeah. guitar hero. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish they would make like a black preacher version where you just right. gotta hit all the right notes to Hilarious. get the collection plate going. <laughs> yeah, and whoever fill up their collection plate first yeah. win the game. That's hilarious. Yeah. That shit look fun to me. I be watching preachers and I be used like, to have a couple sketches when you was a teacher. Yes. So mm-hmm. it's to say again the fool's same shit. Fool's comedy school. Yeah. The fool's comedy school. And to. you was getting over nigga, getting over on nigga. Then. You know what I'm saying? It do feel like it's easy. It's about <laughs> it's just like comedy, hack comedy. Yeah. Rhythm and cadence. Yeah, rhythm mm-hmm. and, and cadence. And you can rhythm and cadence people. Mm-hmm. Like uh now y'all see the Umar memes going around, right? The Dr. Umar memes. Because yeah, people Umar, are clowning him uh, on just what do you like do now. You know Everything? he just you know he just he says it. And I, it, uh, I, fuck with, I fuck with I Umar, fuck but, with him too. But, but no, 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 no. Bro. Let me let me qualify that statement. I fuck with Umar. A lot of Things he says are, are true, and then there are things that it's just like, hey, come on, man. Did you just try to like preaching is next to pimping? Okay. Where you just turn a phrase real quick. Like, I was fucking around a lot about. But it is very similar to that. About power. A lot of the old uh, the TV show. Yeah, yeah. The That's TV, all they right. Are, in the same suits. <laughs> right. <laughs> same suits. Yeah. <laughs> he got hoes, and this dude got That's the right. choir and mm-hmm. the deacons. That's it. But nah, it's literally just rhythm and cadence. Like, uh, what was I talking about with the Umar memes, you know? And, uh,. Oh, Power, mm-hmm. the season finale, and then Malcolm, who shot Malcolm or who killed Malcolm, is on right. Netflix. And I just, rhythm and cadence. I was like, yo, fucking, uh, <laughs> y'all worried about who shot Ghost, but y'all ain't worried about who shot Malcolm X. Mm, yeah. They can tell you who shot Ghost, but they can't tell you who shot Malcolm X. That's because we, we lack power. Right. Yeah, y'all too worried, busy worried about stars and not worried about ours. And I was oh, like, God. see... I would have won the goddamn game right there. It's that. It's literally that easy. Just rhythm and cadence. That's it. Yeah. But uh, well, you, you preach. Where did you preach at? So I was stationed in Rensselaer, New York, which is um, the next city over from Albany, Albany, New York. It ain't even a whole lot of sin out there. Yeah, it ain't. Not, it's not a lot, bro. And I was out with my new wife. You know what I'm saying? Because the thing with the preachers, you need to be. You just can't be preaching at couples. You yeah. need to have be living. So you're going a, a through the same struggles. As so, him. so I, you know, I married my wife at 24. Okay, and uh, things. That's when things really started building up because we have to travel and pressures on, bro. It is like it felt like a, a, a little He's celebrity. You would go from congregation to congregation. So I worked all <laughs> down Jersey. I worked down North Carolina, Charlotte. I went up uh, to Toronto. So you was on tour. Upstate New York, yeah. nigga. That's okay? crazy. And every single week, you doing an hour, hour and ten. And again, <laughs> I was a funny preacher, nigga. Yeah. Personality. You had bars. Nigga. Yeah. Motherfuckers is crowning you get, after. Get, you know get, what I'm Give saying? us one of your old bars Seven real quick bars, if you can remember yeah. something. Come oh, on, son. Come give on, us one of your old oh, bars. There's some people oh, listening that need some healing. Oh, damn, nigga. Uh, what's up, man? It's, oh, yeah. you got Hallelujah. Let's make Make him feel at home, Ibrahim. No, this is church. Yeah, he like, I don't, I don't this do was, that. Ibrahim said, wrong church. <laughs> this was, again, predominantly white church. We didn't oh, do it. Oh, he was oh, killing him. I hate mainstream room. I really hate oh, you. Oh, mainstream room. Yeah, I absolutely was. Fuck them. these nigga churches. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You in the these, black preachers group on Facebook. These nigga churches ain't shit. Oh, they went they okay. paying right? The, what ba- the Baptist audience. First off, black people being real like, like crazy Christians to me is so crazy. That was a religion given to y'all niggas. Okay, that's not really a, a real religion that is in the, the history of black people on this earth. Which, so, just like I was saying to him earlier, and I mean, he's Muslim, obviously, but I was telling somebody uh, the other day, like, yo, Christianity is lazy. It allow you to lay around. Muslim, you got to fucking pray three times a day. You five, five times a day. Mm-hmm. So I'm tripping. I thought it was three. Yeah, five times. Mm-hmm. Five times a day and to the east. So you yeah. gotta you gotta know things and <laughs> no fast at certain times. You can't eat certain food. No, no, no. The main, no, you no. just eating everything. Oh man, another good point, nigga. The mainstream black nigga churches and even a lot of white churches, Roman Catholic, 
are, is, is that definition lazy. Mm-hmm. But if you're doing Christianity right, no, that shit is on par with ah, all of the, the Judaic Semitic religion. The, the, the Semitic, all the Semitic So religion. we diet Christians. Nigga, we what was, you're we, saying. It's more cultural than anything. Come Got on, man. You. I kept the Sabbath, bro. It, it, it's Saturday. like six days shall you work, mm-hmm. seven days shall you rest. That's Saturday, not this mm-hmm. bum. Seven. Niggas would be going to church on Sunday, I'd be laughing at them. That's not real. <laughs> this is shit that was brought in That's in the a fashion, fashion show. Come on, nigga. <laughs> You know, and then they be making up scripture, come as you are. Nigga, that ain't no real scripture, nigga. It ain't no such thing as come as you are. Niggas made up shit. We really believe that shit. They quote, they quote a lot more preachers than they do at the actual word. Yeah, Got it's you. like rappers. You know what I'm saying? But but we actually believe. Well, it's all propaganda. We That's only why taught I say that all the time. what was in the Bible. That was it. We you, only taught what was in the Bible. And you was preaching like anti-gay stuff too? Oh, man. We, I was killing you. You was uh, going hard? Sexuals backs, nigga. <laughs> Oh, I was killing fruitcake bags, nigga. You, you was tearing the rainbow and, up? And, 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 we, and, and we could have said faggot in church. I'd be up on that pulpit uh, calling these niggas a faggot. I was one of them type niggas. So you was ripping up the rainbow on the I, pulpit. I was fucking digging them out. And That's then crazy. I started Start digging them out. Then I was really digging them out. <laughs> What's <What's that? laughs> the but see, that's he came, the, uh, he came full the circle. The irony. He came full <laughs> circle. <laughs> literally came full the iron. circle. <laughs> came full rainbow. Came that was the pot circle. of gold at the end of God, that rainbow. Damn. Okay, Lucky circle, charms. Triangles. I came in a lot of shapes. <laughs> but nah, that's the irony to me of people who go extra hard against something. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, like the abortionist uh, people... It, it, at a certain point, you're almost obsessed with it. Right. To where, like, okay, it was, uh, damn, what is her name? I'm trying to think of her name real Leah quick. Leah Dunham? No. God bless. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm probably on the right path, though. Um, fuck. Because she recorded, like, a gospel song and then, like, made a song with a rapper or something. And then the very next week, she was in church and she was preaching anti-gay. And she was like, the ladies is rubbing all on the breast and they touching each other. Mm, no. And they're I know staring into each bitch. other's eyes. And it's like, oh, this right. She was on a song, the Janelle Monae uh, situation. Damn, I can't think of her I name. Know who Old black about. lady, but yep. yeah. I know who you're talking about. And it was, she sounded like, right. you, well, you like, well, sis, sister, keep going, shit. I'm, I'm halfway there. <laughs> <Yeah. Right. laughs> you were describing the scene so perfectly. It sound like you nah, do she, it. Maybe she she dealt with a husband of somebody who was like a home, you know, fruit booty nigga or something. You yeah, know, that may be. A so lot of black women, that, I, I find that that um, black women that I've run into negative situations, they've been affected by it in some way. Oh, you know? somebody took their man. Basically. Somebody took their man. Because, listen, no bad bitch is going to complain about a gay, a, a gay nigga or even a nigga that goes to a white bitch. I can't stand when motherfucking bitches be complaining it's, about shit. It's less competition. Like, like come on. Like, like what do you do? You so, got really shit going on that you worried that the fact that you can't get a message because all the good niggas is with white bitches. Mathematically, come on, no. mathematically, you don't have it together, mama. I'm sorry. Mathematically, no the only person you should be mad at is by people because you should say pick one, my Yeah, father. yeah, yeah. You okay, can't exactly. be out here. Just being greedy. You're selfish. You're just taking everything. <laughs> right. But come on, man. <laughs> Buffet bitches. Come right. On. Mm-hmm. So you was anti-preaching. And that's funny because, yeah, like I said, the irony of it. Remember, like, the uh, politician that was tapping his foot under the bathroom stall? Oh, man. Yeah, that shit was hella funny. Yeah, yeah. And God bless Marv Albert because we was just talking about the NBA. <laughs> Marv. When Marv out, but Marv, Marv got caught. He Marv was with a chick. Yeah, he was with a chick, chick. But he yeah, liked yeah. to wear women's panties and shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's Man, he was getting yeah, spanked. He's king. He was biting bitches and That's shit. That's why they paid. I remember the biting bitches, and I didn't think but there was anything her, wrong with that. He was wearing her, uh, her clothes. And TNT, now, that's a violation. If you wear his panties, and that's a violation. TNT suspended him. And it was like, for wearing panties and biting bitches. Basketball wasn't the same for those two, three years he was exactly. Away. Nigga, I, mean, Marv Allen, I thought it was just like a no, month. No, it was, a few, it was like three it was years. years. It was yeah. like three years. He was, off, yeah. he was off TV. I know but yo, was. basketball games wasn't the same. I wanted to hear that. One yes. of the best sports. Word up. <laughs> I was like, yo, let him wear women's clothes, man. Bring hey. that motherfucker back. Bro. Bring that motherfucker back. Motherfucker hit a shot. Hey, I'm, I'm listening for the announcement. I'm like, it don't hit the same. Free, free, free Marv. Marv. The same, man. Hey, free, free, freaky uh, Marv. Word up. Let Marv uh, bite bitches uh, left and right. That's what Marv used to say. Marvelous yes, right. oh, that's, yes. that's why I'm uh I, I have you know my issues with sometimes the gay community because I'll say like okay 
But is that progressive or is that your own personal thing? But at the same time, I'm pro it because let motherfuckers live their life. What the fuck we suspending Marv Alva for for wearing women's pants? What the fuck they got to do with me? They ain't got shit to do with me. Maybe the negligee was helping him call the game better. I don't know what he was doing. Right. <laughs> so. Oh, and I guess that is called he's a part of the gay community because he's wearing, yeah. I, I don't even know what that would be called, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. that would just be a kink that he's It's a lot of shit. Right. Even right. Some right. type of homo shit to be wearing panties and So, which is weird now because, you know, sex workers, everybody's pro sex worker, but then they're still harassing Robert Kraft about getting the rubbing tug. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, right. well, if you're pro sex worker, then you yeah, gotta be the pro the person patronizing. Actually, they the sex should be worker. pushing for that sex worker to get time and a half. So which I'm dealing with uh, the old balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm hazardous, hazardous duty. I, I'm pro uh, ho, but I'm still scratching my head about sex work because I'm like, that's an oxymoron. Yeah, yeah sex should not work. be able to jerk off and then. Fill out a W nine. What to? What? Well, the, I don't know. I just feel like there are some motherfuckers that are just so good at sex they should charge for it. Okay, and a lot of that is uh, there's bitches in these streets that are just advanced. Uh, the whole Dominican race is uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to. They are It's named for it. Well, well that shit's legal in their country, so it makes oh, yeah. sense. They but come a lot over of here it with is, those same principles. Well, have you ever? Transacted with a prostitute before? I'm, I like, what haven't. Am I asking? Of course you have. I haven't. Get the fuck out of here. I haven't. I don't even know why I said that. Me and him have you not. Yeah. 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 You ain't, yeah. you ain't so, let me finish. Yeah. I haven't, but I want to just to have done it. So in DR, it's not like it no, it's not like an official type of transaction. You fuck with a bitch, and it's really amazing. And for her time. You give her, you throw her something. You know, it's like an unspoken, of course well, you Like they say, you pay him to leave. You Yo, don't dude, yeah. pay him to pay him to leave, but you're going to have her but, back. But, but they, if she but, did yeah, her but, job but, right. But, but I heard in the DR, they, they, them bitches cook for you sometimes. Nigga, they it's clean. Clean. Oh, it's I don't want to say that. It's like you have a wife for fucking, for that, for that period, awesome. if you want her to stay. Gotcha. I've never done that. I've never been to DR. I already said I'll never go. Nah, they, DR right. Brazil, I'll never go. Because I, I won't come back. Patrice well, O'Neill, I won't come back. In DR. Brazilians. Hilarious. And I don't know Brazilians. So that's not my I know. experience. Yeah. I know DR. It is very Patrice similar. It's an experience. Was talking where, about that. You know, what was your wife's reaction when she found out or whatever? Uh, well, this is you know one of our fights, actually, that I wanted to you know real quick uh, talk about uh, was with my wife. I gave her, uh, I mean, we had a real good row. You know what I'm saying? And um, she was a black lady. I didn't just hop on to... Well, first off, in my church, we believe that blacks should be with blacks and whites should be with whites. Hmm, okay? That's an interesting fucking church. So, um, this you was know, the church of Jim Crow. <laughs> yeah, th- this was, you know, I mean, we talking about Worldwide Church of God. Look it up. It's, it's you know, Mr. Uh, Herbert W. Armstrong. He, he had a lot of people believe in the same shit. But a lot of that evangelical stuff, they say stuff like that. And she was a black woman, and ain't no black bitch going for no homo type shit. Nah. Now, a white woman, which I've been with white women, they are more open, you know, to things, okay? But ain't no black Jamaican bitch. No, nah, not at all. She was Jamaican. Now, she was from Canada, but, she was but Jamaican, Jamaican, st- Jamaican. Yeah, yeah they culturally. They don't fuck with that. They be talking about they don't even eat. Pussy, and I'd be like, "Hey, uh, everybody! Every now pussy. and then, you want a snack? Come on, man! Yeah, you know, you know, nah, they talk, they talk do that. that yeah, they talk about animal, that man. like it ain't manly. So I don't know, but yeah. nah, uh, that's that's interesting because now, like I said, it's a lot of stuff being thrown at the spectrum or whatever. And I got in an argument with somebody. You know what they was talking about was pegging. And I was like, "That's gay to Hold me. on, yeah. fam. And yeah, that's yeah. what I said. I said, "Hey, do what you do." But just know that you on that side of the game now. I ain't judging you, but you you're is gonna, on that side back. of the game. But you can't see Marvin Albert wearing let me, panties. Let me, is, let me, is, let is let me show you where on, somebody. On that side of the game. No, I said it. It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever the fuck you want, but I'm gonna be on the other side laughing. That's my thing. Uh, <laughs> you can tap your foot in truck stop bathrooms, and I'm gonna be laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, no. Where somebody fucked me up was logically. I'm a very logical person because I said, well, if someone can put something in your ass, then you obviously don't care who it is. And hell, you got to look back there. You don't know who the fuck back there. She might have (laughs) left. But the dude goes, well, you get head. 
That's just right. a mouth. Exactly. And I say, yo, oh, he fucked my whole logic up. Right. So, yeah, I, but you. And, and that's true. And you don't want to get ahead from a man, okay? Just Uh-oh. don't even play Uh-oh. with that. Don't even play with that. I'm telling you, it's not for play because men get better head. So, what you got to do is stay far, far away. That would be my advice to all <laughs> niggas. Do not try none of this fucking, you know, shit. Because if you do, you're you going to get fucked up out there. Okay? And I be telling my this cousins. This just nephews, became a Q&A. Them. I be talking to them. I be like, don't do not do this. You don't want none of this. This okay? became a Q&A. This is an <laughs> info. No, it's a, it's a motherfucker. What they call it? Seminar. PSA. They PSA. PSA. It's a- Sponsored by JC Knows Word Best and the Crooked Politics. No one, none of this shit over here. I'm telling you, it's terrible. Trans women. Shirley, no, it wasn't Shirley Caesar, was it? I was trying to think of the lady's uh, name came back to me. The uh, lady we was talking about. It wasn't Shirley Caesar. Because that's the uh, Thanksgiving woman. The, rent, the greens, the beans, tomatoes. I can't think of her name for nothing. We sorry, Shirley Caesar. We didn't mean to put your name out there like that. I'm just trying to think of that anti-gay woman. Shirley that was, Caesar said, said, doing the same song <laughs> Homo homo in that. <laughs> <laughs> He's fast. He's there. <laughs> you wild. <laughs> you a wild dude, girl. Fags, homo. Uh, what what got you into comedy? Like, when did you say I should try comedy? Oh, this was years after, man. Again, I left the uh, I left the church, and I I struggled for a while. You know, me and my wife was separated, so I was just out in the streets, nigga, trying to find out what career I'm supposed to do, and. I'm in corporate America. I did a lot of corporate America gigs. I made a lot of money. But you're in a cubicle. I don't care. No, I guess when you start to really make enough money, you'd be like, nigga, yeah. I need to try something else. I'm not living my passion. You know what I'm saying? Was, I was installing alarms, working for ADT. And I was like a 19-year-old kid. But I seen a lot of dudes in their 30s, and they was miserable. Right. And it's like, damn, I don't want to do that shit. Right. So, yeah, I started after seeing the real world and being like, that shit is whack. Right. And I mean, it's always kind of been in the back of my mind. I watched Bring the Pain or whatever. When like did you start? What, what age I started start? when I was 20. Okay. So, so you got a way one up on me and shit, which is great, man. The younger, the better. Up you know there understand? talking about nothing, but you mature and, you yeah, know. Yeah, but at least you talk involved. about something. You and know yeah, but you kind of can find your voice and, you know, rhythm, just like we were talking about. Half of this shit is rhythm, cadence, all right. that shit. Being able to somewhat hide and disguise your jokes and where I, you're going. I want to talk about this, and it ain't even no joke, but I want to talk about this fight. This just one fight. I know this sounds like you do that at the end and shit, but I just want to get this out here because it's... Okay. Okay. Because that was about. where we was going. The, so I'm with my wife, and you said, "Does she ever find out?" So she had seen some type of text message or something. I don't know. It was. It was because at the time I was into some like just looking experiment shit. And I, was, uh, I was meeting niggas on Craigslist. That's how you would do it back. You was back. meeting dudes on Craigslist. That's how they had it. So back. So in you the day, was on Craigslist looking for Craig. It wasn't no grinder. <laughs> Back in the oh, day. he said there was some free, it literally free grinder. Free grinder. Niggas was out, you know, especially married niggas. You out in the in the um the platonic se- section of Craigslist, the male for male. Platonic. You want, yeah, you want a male. Nah, bro. You go play basketball. And I you, didn't even know <laughs> that was a thing. Oh, and you really play shit. ball and shit. Oh wow! So, I know. didn't even know that was a section. <laughs> men that, looking for men talking about platonic Cruising section for niggas yes. who have. Hey, bro, be so, honest with yourself. So, so uh, you know, I, I was out there doing that, and I, I had just met, I don't know, whoever it was. I had whoever I had in my phone, and this is me, full preacher, everything. Yeah. And I think she had seen it one morning, and nigga, when I say she blacked out, okay? I think I was, where was I at? I was in the house, in the bedroom, chilling, and she, had, I guess, took my phone and ran to the car, Freak the fuck out. Oh, she was uncovering all types of shit. She seen something in the text. I don't know what she's saying, but she came back in the house, nigga, and that was it. She, she was off. off. She actually, hit you with the Bible? Actually, uh, matter of fact, <laughs> if, I, if I recall... Do like, do like Born Identity, put the book... <laughs> put the book against his put face. Put good book into ah, the face. Ah, put it into his throat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Born Identity you on you? The limited edition King James. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the new international version, that Jamaican Rolled up version. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she had the page open to Sodom and Glamour. Oh, yeah. Sodom and Glamour. <laughs> bam, bam. Which, a part of that. Uh, People of so, 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 she actually put hands on you? Oh, most definitely. She was trying to 
get the keys. She wanted to go. She was that. That's what it was. She, she was done. She was out. Okay. I reversed. She she hadn't been to the car until she tried to get them keys. And I wouldn't lay off them keys. I was like, yeah. no, you can't You didn't leave. need nobody leaving with that information. No, nah, you can't <laughs> leave. We, listen now. I was like, sweetie, I'm sorry, but we gotta, you know, we, we got a front to maintain. So okay. this is not a this is fucking not with the money. Time. With the time. This, with the this money. is not something. She was she this, was Malcolm and you was Elijah this, at that moment. <laughs> this is good for me and you. We both benefit from fucking this. with my brain. <laughs> so, so did she wind up leaving you out and you what what happened? So, did so, you come to terms? So with in it? terms of the fight first, because this shit was so dramatic. We, yeah. And you know, we talk, and I see you um, pr- I feel like I've seen you t- type or really take some creep positions about hitting women. And I could be wrong, um, but each time that I feel like you've said some shit, I was nah. like, correct. I agree well, with nah, it. Well, nah, it's qualified <laughs> I mean, statements. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna absolutely. go on record and say it. I absolutely <laughs> never said hit a woman. But here's what I, what I did say, and what I do say. Is uh was I was telling somebody recently what was it oh the boxer was it what's his name Javante Davis uh, no, Davis Javante yeah, yeah. Javante, Javante Davis I don't know the name but his that hands those are registered weapons registered weapons what, he, that's somebody? different he got caught snatching his girl he snatched yeah. his girl up out the seat like yo let's go yeah oh, word. snatched her up and of course men on Twitter man I would have blip 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 Fam, he would've you would have got, got your, your ass, ass beat. beat by a light heavyweight. Yeah. <laughs> 140 pounds would have busted That's your ass. Different. Even the you Ray Rice 20. situation is different because we're talking about these are niggas who can kill motherfuckers. But just in well, general- no, my mother taught me in the case of that, never interrupt. I tried to interrupt my aunt and my uncle, and my mother said, Look, the motherfuckers will kill you and you, show up at your you, funeral holding hands. Right. And ever since then, mm-hmm. when I, I mind my motherfucking business, I'm Stevie Wonder. Oh, you mean <laughs> in a domestic situation? Yeah, I'm Stevie. Stevie Wonder. I don't know who did what yeah. to who, when, where, how. At the uh, most, I, as a I, man, I, I'll say something. If he about to kill her, I'll, I'll probably get as, the sweet. You know what I mean? Like that we, shit. We, we, we at the pair. Well, no, I'm saying like, I'll if, say if her something. Life is, you know what I mean? We That's, be at the pair, and old girl white, and she around a lot of niggas at the pair, and uh, old dude lost it. Okay, Uh-oh. and um, we was good with it. I was good with it. I wasn't really saying nothing. Now he's calling her all types of bitch. Fuck you, my bitch. Oh wow, loudly. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And it was like, all right, it's uncomfortable, but yeah. nobody was doing shit. Nah, I'll Always say take your shit. Now even then, I didn't say shit. Call her a bitch. That's your bitch. Okay, she's still there. But then he put his fucking uh, forearm against her neck. Um, against the wall, and I was like, "Oh, I yeah, that's too much." Now, that's too come much. on, come yeah. on. That's well, that's what I'm saying. I and, and that's why, like I said, I think people, the first person to say they're gonna do something is not. Right. And people who right. say they're gonna do right. something right. online right. are not. Right. That's right. why I'm reserving judgment to say I ain't gonna do shit until it get real. Then right. I'll step in and I'll definitely say. Yo, <laughs> and, plus, and plus, based on his capability, him snatching up out the seat is like, well, yeah, he might as well have just petted her like a cat because he right. could have did far worse, right? To her, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And everyone's going on, but it looked they real bad, him. bro. Because if you're that aggressive in public, see, that's what it says. So if you're that aggressive in public, what are yeah. you doing? In and that's what they that's say. What I said, they but that's that what I said about the Ray Rice shit. When I saw the Ray Rice situation. When I saw the whole video when his girl hit him yeah. and he hit her, I said, oh, they do this all the time. Yeah. yeah. They do that. All, that's how they get down. They get sexy to some people. Yeah. I, yeah. I got to be honest. It is a sexy thing when you beat each other in a relationship. Well, that's what I was saying when they were talking. <laughs> you, got some, you got some motherfuckers that's When like they that. were talking. Uh, real. I'm telling you from that. personal experience. It's real. When it's, they were talking about uh, this situation, I'm saying, y'all keep calling him toxic. Y'all don't get that she likes him because he's that way. Yeah. Right. She yeah. knew he was violent already. And I'm not condoning. In the virus. I'm just saying, like I said, sometimes it ain't my place. And I don't know if she interrupt. likes him, but she is attached to it. So well, she's let's back up deep. a little here. Uh, childhood. Where'd you grow up at, man? Uh, I grew up in Edison or not Edison, Central Jersey. Edison was one of the spots I grew up in, but New Jersey, Brunswick, yes, Franklin yes, Park. Yes, Central yes, Jersey don't exist. Okay, yes, uh oh, uh oh. It's a newer, <laughs> newer So what we used to we used to call we used to call it by exit. So I was from Exit Nine. You okay, know, what you saying Exit Nine in New you, Jersey. You fought a lot growing up in that. Uh, I'm not a fighter, bro. I'm a troll, and I've always been a troll. <laughs> now I've been at before the term exists. You know, at one point, troll was just under a bridge. Yeah, or yeah, treasure yeah. Troll. ugly niggas. Now right. we, right. I forget right. what Evolve. we used. We used to call it instigator. Right. 
No, oh, yo, you I was an instigator. You instigator. Yeah, you yeah. starting shit. But I was funny too, so it was like niggas let me rock and shit. Yeah. But a couple times I got yoked up and I uh, dealt with it. What, you know, what would you it. say the your worst loss was? Walk, uh, walk us through. About fifth grade, you know. Um, about fifth grade. Yeah, I, I walked. Uh, you know, we just said it was at right bathroom now. You know, dude's name was David. And he's a big cocky, you know what I'm saying, Down syndrome ass looking nigga. <laughs> and, you know, I'm taking that L, bro, but I stood up like a man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I took my um I took my L like a man, but we fought it, it was it lasted. In the bathroom? Quickly. In the bathroom in fifth grade. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Fifth grade. Actually it was one worse than that, nigga. Oh man. I I I'm sorry that I'm They're coming back around. to you. It's coming back like the I'm really back. not a fight. I'm telling you, I'm 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 getting beat up mostly. I can scrap. I'm a scrapper, but I'm not, you know, a fighter. I mainly like Got to just you. talk shit. So this time on in high school on the bus, nigga, you know how the bus beat them. Everybody in the back, all the niggas in the back, you know, what yeah. I'm saying? all the all the lit motherfuckers, yeah, in the, in the back. back. You already niggas know, talking shit, da 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 da. And I must have instigated and gone too far. I can't even remember quite. What yeah, exactly it's I did. funny when it when it when that line get crossed, somebody go, oh, the line, nigga. next thing you know, and 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 bro, dude, oh, this is so embarrassing for me to say because this was real tragic back okay. in the day. He slapped me like a duel, nigga. You know how you used to challenge me <laughs> to a duel back in the day with the, the gloves? So you got slapped like how Rick James got was slapping me. Nigga, beer. no. That's more so like the eight ball nigga in the train when he slapped oh, that shit. bitch. Oh, like, The eight ball ah, man. Yeah. But he yeah. did it with his backhand. And God nigga, damn. the whole bus was like, damn. <laughs> I'd rather motherfuckers just punch me. Oh, oh man. Just punch me. Don't slap that me. That's why I said it's so With the back of the hand, too. Nigga, it it's was... It's like, I'm not even gonna... I tell you. I'm not even gonna ball my fist up. Oh, I'm just nigga. Gonna, it was like, so disrespectful. My I, most embarrassing one was... And I mean, when I was a freshman in high school. Right. So I'm already this height now. I'm, what, right. five, four, five, seven in platforms. Look, nigga, you five, five now. How'd right. You, okay. So back then, I'm like five foot... <laughs> Man, and I, this motherfucker used to fuck with me every day, which you in high school, which if a motherfucker flunk a grade and don't let him flunk two grades, you motherfuckers in the 19 with facial hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm 14 and this oh, motherfucker was? was a senior in my gym class. Who had been left back? But he used to fuck with me every day and he was about six foot tall. And I remember finally one day. I hit this motherfucker like, oh, and nice. I mean, he had been hit. He 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 he, he, he wouldn't hit me, but he would push. He would say little shit, and you know I got three sisters, so he, you know, that was an easy way for somebody to start a fight with you, yo, your right. sister X Y Z. So I would kind of just sit there and take it, like, damn, I don't want to get suspended. Let me just take this shit. So finally, he started thinking I'm a punk. So finally, one day, and I mean the whole class is observing every day he fucks with me. <laughs> so finally, one day, it probably took about three months. I get up, and he says something, and I just walk right over to him, bam. Did punch him in the jaw. Him? Nah, listen. I punch him right in his fucking jaw. And I think because every day we had been kind of face to face and he would always say or do something to me and I never did nothing back, that it surprised him. But this was what was so embarrassing. One girl looked and just went, and don't you even do nothing to him because you be messing with him every day. Oh my God. And then everybody just went, yeah. And he then, and then even he that. went, all right, fair enough. And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> oh, I wanted to fight. Real fight. In yeah. my mind, I had been going through it every day. Like, I, I'm just a damn, I finally fucking hit this motherfucker. That's and the school I was hyped. I was ready for the fight. <laughs> yeah. And then the girl goes, don't you even do nothing to him. And then he agreed. And it was just like. Damn, I'm that much of a bitch out here in these streets <laughs> everybody felt that everybody just felt like about time. <laughs> it was no, it was no contest. It don't even register in his thing. Yeah, no yeah, everybody just went nah. I don't do that, damn, man. That's but nah, that's funny. You got backhanded. I got. Backhanded. Did you hit him back? Uh, it was so much commotion. But, ah! Oh, but that type of shit going wild. Kind of like dispersed, and I really did. <laughs> oh, I just I took that L. I was like, did you start preaching? Nah, nigga, this was before preaching. Did I just said that's okay. <laughs> David slapped Goliath with the slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> nigga passed around a collection. You must plate. turn the other cheek. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, was you into religion then? Did you grow up religious? Oh yeah, I grew up religious, bro. I grew up really, really religious. That's okay. why. That's why when I was going through the shit with my wife. It was so crazy because I felt bad for her, but then I couldn't just take an L. And, you know, me and her actually, 
you know, we went for like blows a little bit. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure she took an elbow to the face. Okay. You know? I, I, yeah. Oh, definitely. It was. It wasn't going to be no type of situation. Well, the Lord sure. forgives, but Gail King don't, nigga. So oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna have to get she you for that. Yeah. Which, by the way, that whole thing, Gail King. How funny is it that she was interviewing a WNBA player? When I saw that, I said, oh, this, this is a She's setup. Reaching. Mm-hmm. It was a yeah. setup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from yeah. jump. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. Lisa, let, look, y'all didn't interview Lisa Leslie. All them all years, them years she played on the Sparks. Yep. All types of MVP trophies. She dunked in a game and still right. didn't get a Good right. Morning America interview. It took for an NBA player to die for you to get some. Yeah. Uh, specifically a nigga that had yeah. Quote unquote, rape some rape charges, rape. yeah. So yeah, how do you as a woman as look a real funny? Professor? Y'all didn't give a fuck about her being decorated that whole time, like you said. Yeah. It's women, WNBA it players. Set. What I don't like is the whole shit about everybody talking about some because what Snoop said about Gail, Gail. and all of them. Now all of a sudden, we hate black women. It's yeah. like, nah, she's been called out on some fuck shit she did. Which is why black shit. women. Was there another woman that's got to be No. Trouble? Well, nah, but. No, you know. but they're saying because of how he reacted to, to the situation, now it's become this narrative online that black men hate black women. It and was everyone's really just. Run, and everybody's running to Gail in Oprah's defense because he shouldn't have disrespected. Snoop Which, been yeah. calling girls bitches and hoes. In for a fun- long time. I'll tell you some funky, Not that that makes it funky better. Dog head bitch. <laughs> yeah. bitch okay? yeah. That's a little one step yeah, up. So that's Snoop an aggressive type hard. shit. I, I thought so, Snoop's language like could have been though. better, but they I do Snoop agree with the though. sentiment of like, look, we've had 20 something years to talk about Kobe's charges. Y'all could have asked him about them. Right. Now that he's dead, kind of let that shit rest in peace. And my general rule is I can never be more upset than the victim is. Right. So. If that woman ain't said nothing, then I don't think it's for us to be digging up and bringing up. So here's my she issue with them. My issue reason. with them is timing. Oh, I don't always. like Gail or Oprah's timing. Fucking Oprah sits up on the Central Park Five documentary crying with uh, Ava DuVernay like she didn't have a platform back then <laughs> yeah. to kind of help their case. But mm. then she was quiet. And it was time to hug Bill Clinton and hug Trump and Trump. take pictures mm-hmm. with Weinstein. That's mm-hmm. not timing, nigga. That's an agenda. You're her, right. And that's that what it not, feels like. That did not affect her agenda. Right. This does. Yeah. Right. So actually, they got perfect timing. And yeah, now that Me Too was popping, that's you perfect. sat up smiling with Michael Jackson the whole time he was alive. Mm-hmm. And now that Me Too was popping and he's now dead, it's time for like, dead, yeah. uh, dead Negro documentaries yeah. and right. shit. And, and then even the Russell Simmons thing that it's like which she pulled out of but it's like you should not ever been in it in the first place because when it was happening and he was fat farming and it was death jamming he was on your couch Mm -hmm. and you got pictures with him as well so my my issue is with people with the narrative that is somehow brave to be the 50th person to say something to me that's a pile on and it's like yo let the people I, I don't have an issue with justice for those women if they have an issue with him, let them take up, up that issue. But you don't need to pile on. He already going down. I don't know about that. I don't care. If you if you creeping, you out here raping, let it all happen. Well, no, but that's you what know, I'm saying. I, but I'm I, saying I don't, I don't the pile on becomes overkill. And like I said, the narrative that it's brave. Go ahead. Get your shit off, Oprah. But this narrative that it's brave, it's not brave and that it needs to be shined a light on and that they deserve money because Gail King got paid right after that R. Kelly interview. Bro, it's definitely not brave, but I will say for what their agenda is, it does serve their purpose very well. You know, for comment, that, that, listen, we talk about timing shit. He, I, I know dude got to go. No, I'm listening. Yeah. Um, Five to ten minutes. For timing and shit, we you almost know, done. Like niggas say, talk about timing for a Kobe joke or something like that. My thing is, the timing is, is when it's hot, bro. So, you know, I can't sit, take that position of you can tell a joke no matter what the fucking situation is, as long as it's hot right then and there, and then say, Galen, what's the name? Timing is wrong. They got an agenda. We as comics got an agenda. It, it, it's all. I don't know, have everybody got to play their say position. funny shit. <laughs> And I hope and I offend a different group every day of the my, week. My agenda is sometimes to make people squirm. And, you know, I can't do that by telling a joke after somebody's death three weeks later. It's like, right. no, nigga, it's I got to tell it right now. The yeah, day the of timing. when the shit 
Well, like I said, and I mean, Jezelnik Jezelnik follows that same same premise because he said he said because it's not yeah because it's cowardice if you're gonna wait to everybody and beat it to death. Come on, now you're gonna say something. Well. To your point, JC, me and Ibrahim chopped it up a few weeks ago about it. Yeah. And I, all I said was the same thing I'm saying for Gail and Oprah. I I don't fault you for making a joke. I make mad deaf jokes. Like, even today, it was a, a, a dude in Florida. This motherfucker got fired from his job and came back. He worked for Under Armour and killed the manager. Oh. And I couldn't even help it. I said, that would have never happened at Over Armour. <laughs> and and it's just like yeah so i can't be a hypocrite and say don't right. but where i'm gonna disagree with most comics is this narrative that is brave like mm. i said you know oprah wants to make fucking death sexual misconduct jam and air it on the same channel that russell helped build and i'm mm. like ooh, that look a little funny to me right. look like you exploiting them on two ends not to say that you can't do it necessarily, but like she I said, it. that's how she been. That's do you know how Oprah let came another up channel do this? Oprah shit. came up, up with some like raciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Her shit was as good as National Enquirer. It was yeah. all the same. My father she, she hated was, Oprah. She was man. Richard Bay. For and I, for, bro, Richard Bay. You remember him? Yeah, I remember Uh-oh, Richard Bay. Nigga. I don't even. You don't remember Richard Bay? Richard Bay was before Jerry Springer. He was worse than Jerry. Was worse than Jerry. Him and Downey. More than Downey Jr. About trannies was from. Richard Bay, Richard Bay, and Morton Downey Jr. That's a no. They were the two wow, most J.C. proud. They were the two most fucking talk. Care. So I ain't talking. really proud of it, but I'm not finna lie about it. What's but you that? ain't Mr. C. In. What's that? Well, it's Mr. C. Keep. Oh, I accidentally got caught with a trans. Oh, oh yeah. I, J.C. Yeah. He actually, said I'm leaning do in. you still have a podcast called Trans Talk? No, not anymore. Okay, it got too real. But absolutely, and I love Mr. C. But he couldn't fess up to it. And that's my hard. thing. And again, back to being brave. I think when you're the first person to say some shit, you almost get the credit. Like look at yeah. uh Bruce Jenner, yeah, or Caitlyn Jenner, or whatever the hell. Yeah, but. How he kind of took that and became the poster child of. Yeah. And like I said, I, it, if that's your thing, go on ahead and take that. That's why with, with Mr. C, you like, fam, you can't keep telling me you got caught in a random sting operation. It's your I fifth mean, one. Yeah, I several oh, I, I was helping her with directions. <laughs> nah, man. We yeah, was you, talking. She, you know, get she telling her to get in the car and to go down ain't if, exactly where directions. Where the cheese is at? Right. Yeah. So it's just like Mr. C. That girl got a GPS just like you do. Yeah. <laughs> Stop yeah, playing yeah. with us. Oh, he got caught again. <laughs> he got caught like three or four times. I heard like, about two. It's been more since then. I remember the Man, first. I it ain't no know. since then. Nigga. Everybody knows now. Now if he get caught, it's like oh. Okay, and then this is what I hate don't make news no more. This is what I hate about movies. But we'll wrap up on, on, on Auntie Oprah. Like I said, I I disagree with Snoop's language, but I agree with the sentiment because, like I said, all those pictures. Then there's like some sexual abuse at Oprah's school and I'm like she has a school in Africa I'm like that's the documentary you need to be doing oh, of course no, she's not shit. going to she's and not going to do fucking Weinstein she's not going to do fucking why isn't she going to do Weinstein seriously because someone asked me I, she, I don't understand why she's not because they're 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 bored they, I mean, not, they're and bored, Weinstein was a whole ass wait a minute wait, Weinstein. Ooh, Weinstein was worse than Cosby and fucking uh, uh, I, I try not to get into who's worse crazy. Whatever. at least Cosby has <laughs> a decent to wait till his victims was asleep oh, oh fucking yeah. Weinstein is raping niggas <laughs> not, alive you got to Hey, Weinstein, a whole ass freak. Weinstein was was jerking off in plants. They got to put the plants on the stand to yeah. testify. Are you? You ain't read? <laughs> yeah, Weinstein plant, nothing in plants. He plant yeah. sexual. <laughs> that motherfucker is plant sexual. No, old oh boy, he too. What's the motherfucker from uh, uh, Good uh, Today on uh, Matt yeah, Lauer? Matt Lauer. No, but, but yeah, that was some white. Like, he wasn't raping bitches. Yeah, what? yeah. I nah, think. He was, Dude, he was locking bitches was in his office. And, well, he, and this is a business opportunity. Surely you don't believe that. That's oh, some doctor. That's some doctor doing shit. No, seriously. I'm sorry. That's some doctor doing shit. He did. No, he did. He did. I do button on his desk. He locked the door. I do believe that, but. He wasn't, nigga, he wasn't keeping them bitches in there uh, past their consent. They was in there for a reason. They knew, just like when you go to a nigga's house at three in the morning to his hotel room, what you think, bro? Oh. What you think? This a, we been finna have a business meeting at three yeah. in the morning at your hotel? Nah, nigga, you know what this is? 
that's different than just raping and taking a pussy, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry. That, that, that you come on. But I mean, it's that's levels. This is a business that, opportunity. It's that, that, that same, Lowry's on a bit, uh, promotion. But that's, it's but that, definitely but that's the same thing. That's shit. the same argument they say about Weinstein and the same one that they said about shit. Cosby. But but all I'm saying shit. is Weinstein that's the documentary. Shit off of the fucking, that's the, fucking the documentary couch. that Oprah. I don't know if all Weinstein shit was 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 same shit. Same shit. It was definitely immoral. Criminal type shit. Yeah, and, Weinstein and, is a creative. And we just want some diversity in the documentaries, is all people are saying. Yes, Woody, yeah, Woody, Woody Allen, Woody Allen married the girl that his he wife told us. Yes, fucking his daughter. His daughter. Nigga, and, but his wife told us that? that he fact got found not guilty. Then years later, marries her, and it's like, well, that's obvious. Yeah, but she's not gonna press charges on him. What? What? No, no. She I, went I, 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 I get that. He found himself a loyal bitch because you gotta start when they young. <laughs> okay, you can't oh, fucking no. wait till these bitches be oh, thirty man. and try to groom the shit when they twelve. He groomed the shit out of Woody Allen. Right. right. He and groomed and the shit adopted out. her with his crazy <laughs> yeah, exactly. ass, and that's why it's just like, yo, just give us some diversity, and that's all Snoop Dogg was saying. Oh, and if you feel that bad about him, you know, bitching at home and. Then, then put a beat behind it and bob your That's fucking true. head Word. because he been doing that yeah, for, for years. years. And it's right. like brand. I said, I don't know about the black they, women I argument. People, I think because people more surprised that he that he got so far off of Martha Stewart's leash. Well, there That's was just no was. beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was you just, know what I mean? They think because he with Martha Stewart, yeah. they thought yeah. you were nicer he than this. Well, that was just pain. Man, Snoop Dogg appears on a song aptly entitled "Fuck Them Other Niggas." Okay, what niggas? Them niggas. That's but, Snoop. Yeah, we get that. So like but, I said, but I they think also market, Kanye would have put... also market Snoop like they no, yeah, sprinkle yeah, yeah. a little bit of Snoop gotcha. over everything. Got gotcha. you. You know what That's, I mean? That yeah, white. He's dunkin', doing everything white. He got a Dunkin' Donuts true, commercial. Right? Because they want us to... They, everybody He's wants to be friends with, with Snoop. But if see, Kanye would have put racism was a choice... On a song, that shit would have been. He has good. put it on. Or that. slavery is a choice. What did he, what did he put? I hated that they boo- they bullied him out of his MAGA hat because I mean, black people he's not, he's not wearing his MAGA they hat. They do need no to. Remember, they made him take it off and then no. he announced it. It was a whole thing. He denounced he, it. He's talking about. Oh, yeah. oh Kanye! God he's damn it! He blamed it on the he blamed it on the meds and it was just like ah, I don't do it. Don't blame it. They bullied him the whole time. Pulling them out of it, it's like nah. Black people insane. need to quit You're right. voting Democrat. Put that shit to a beat and do it. I ain't saying you gotta be Republican. I'm just saying. Try some new shit, niggas. Like everybody's mad at Ben Carson until they need their twins unstuck. Then it's like, oh Ben, we love you, yeah. thank you. And all of a sudden, politics don't matter when your twins are stuck. Right, right, so, right. So yeah. Uh, where the fuck were we? But yeah, that just that whole Oprah Gale thing, and it just started a whole war. Somehow Cosby's tweeting from prison, and it's like, why are y'all surprised? This man is a multi-billionaire. Like, that's he can You think he can't pay somebody to tweet? What did he say now? Cosby jumped into it to agree with Snoop, which made right. everybody laugh. It, it was, was like really Cosby. Funny. The whole time you were free, all you pull did your was pants tell up, Snoop, to pull their pants up and to quit saying bitch and hoe on records. So Cosby's done that a couple times when his son died. Ennis, uh, when he was shot, he all of a sudden he was in favor of the death penalty. That but is. prior to fucking Ennis dying. That nigga was was not he was against the death penalty. Ain't that some shit? That is a mystery that needs to be solved and needs to be undug. What? Uh his son being shot. They never really it came off real funny style, like the same way Michael Jordan's father dying on the side of the road, where it's like your son's How the most famous. How do you not be able to find these niggas? Basketball I, I believe it's probably a gambling debt, right? Which speaking of conspiracies and damn, because Ibrahim gotta leave. Uh Malcolm X. Yeah, did you did you watch any of uh, the Malcolm X shit that was on Netflix? No, uh, the new shit. Who killed who Malcolm? Shot X? Malcolm? Who killed Malcolm? No, I, X? I, I have refused to. to uh, is so, it good or bad? I'm from that area, so it, I'm from. So it was obviously so it was, a it was disgusting, bro. Yeah, because Ibrahim got to leave, but well, it was he, a fair con, uh, nigga, right? Oh, bro. Uh, Bro, it was definitely yeah. Farrakhan giving us the, the documentary um, shine some light yeah, on, yeah, and they, a, they basically blamed the whole shit on Newark, Newark in New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah, my, my which I was town. like, speaking what? of the agenda, yeah. I was like, Damn. I don't know, but, but, but Newark is a town, nigga. You can blame it on a per- give me a person. Well, he did, oh, he did, he did. He was from Newark. And he basically the, the, said the five guys who was involved. Was yeah, from Newark. he named it's on them. the mosque in Newark. 
Okay, even here, before you leave, I got to say this to you. 1993, this is the, uh, what, what do you call your big day? Day of Saints, Slave? Oh, I, that ain't my day, but All, oh. Saint, All Saviors Day. All Saviors up, Day. With Farrakhan. Farrakhan straight up said it. Bruh. He's, nigga, he admitted he to it. it. If we dealt with a traitor like a nation talk, deals with a traitor, what the hell him? business yeah, of it a, is yours? Yeah, he's nigga. talking about the nation. Yeah. But he's talking, but the dude who killed him, the dude who killed yeah, him, was, I, I know that dude. Uh, That's the, when they did the documentary and shit. Everybody in that documentary I knew. Okay. And he, so in, in the five guy, the dude, remember the movie when when listen, anybody the motherfucker pulled, pulled the, the trigger. You no, know I'm saying you know the motherfucker that pulled the sword off, shotgun out of his coat. Mm. In the movie, you never saw Malcolm X. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he pulls the sh- sword off out. Get yeah. your hand out of yeah, my pocket. Yeah. Then he pulls the sword off out. And boom, yeah. That dude who had the sword off was a nigga from my from my hood. Right. He was a, he was in the nation. He was right. from Newark. So Ibrahim, you right. feel like the documentary was true? Oh, it was it was on point. And Ibrahim right. is because we've been hearing about it for like we've been hearing about it for years. So it's and been before, urban legend on mode. Oh, no, wait, urban legend. But before you go, shit was on point. But you're talking about niggas who pulled the trigger. But we know the niggas who just pulled the trigger is not the ones who gave the command for for. Well, yeah, the FBI. So who do you think it was coercion? Basically, so wait, you're, you're saying you don't think it was Farrakhan? It Farrakhan may have been involved, may have, but based on everything that they had. It, it, it came from the top. It came from the top. The top Which I never knew. The what, what I learned from, through like, the documentary Elijah was. Muhammad. Like Elijah Muhammad Farrakhan. Yeah. Always. No, Farrakhan wasn't top. Farrakhan was like this. But they had so many agents within. Yeah. That, what, another thing they shed light on is how many agents they had within. Yeah. The agents it was from the nine NIB in the room. And, and it was... At the Autobahn Bar Room, there was nine oh, yeah. agents. Nine agents. And Already then from the FBI. Already from Nine there. from the FBI. And then the, his fucking bodyguard, who's Malcolm's personal bodyguard. It's so crazy. He was a, and he his was top NYPD. security guard top was security NYPD guy. and informant. They were all, he was an informant. They were all informants. And they all said them. that after wow. he got shot, the dude I went on stage that, but... and... Tried to resuscitate him through CPR, mouth to mouth. And the detective mouth. was like, the detective, detective was like, what, was what, like, what are you doing that He's for? He's a thug. He's a thug. But but then here was the part, and this is some of the stuff that's it, getting man. mixed up with the documentary, is that people were saying, actually, that's not what you're supposed to do if that's a flesh wound. And they said that actually is What's the, the last wound? thing you would want to do. And they said... What's CPR? Yeah, they said that seeing as he was an agent... Actually, what he was doing parents. was trying to make Killing sure he was dead. dead. I would um, make me, I said so, that to my wife, too. Like I said, a lot of it, you look at the documentary and you go, damn, Dude, okay, the way, the way they I don't boxed, know how much weight The way they boxed holds. Malcolm in, the way they boxed him in. You know what I never knew? It was like knew? inevitable. He had nowhere to go. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. They basically he starved him out. Go. And you knew what I what I what I knew. I'm is my favorite civil rights person. Yeah, he he's definitely one of them. I ain't gonna never say he was higher than Malcolm. I view him like you know earth and wind or fire and ice. But, higher than who? But uh, yeah, the documentary definitely shed light on that. And what I didn't know about him was uh that he started speaking bad about Elijah Muhammad. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I never knew oh, yeah. that. I thought it was more of an amicable like Jay and he Dame gave him a conflict. Shot. He gave him a shot, man. Yeah. You know? But then when the, you know, when he found out uh, Elijah was fucking these young chicks and which, shit. Which, as I was, was watching, mine. and I always feel like as a man, anytime you bring women up, you, like you had nothing else. Mm-hmm. If I'm like, and that's why JC be treating these women right. bad. It's right, like, right, right, fam, right. you had nothing else. Hilarious. So that's how I kind of felt about Malcolm. Come on, Malcolm, like, damn, come on, Malcolm you didn't have nothing else. You had the dirty Mac. <laughs> And call him, uh, call him out because I always feel like that's a bit hypocritical. Like, hey, we all funny. be looking at some women. Even even Martin Luther King fell short there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, shit, that he dream more, wasn't the only he, dream he, he had. He also love, had a yeah. dream about some of these women's. Oh, yeah. Women's, women's, women. He was women's. doing a lot more than dream, dreaming. Man. Yeah, he had a couple <laughs> dreams about nigga. these women's <laughs> as well and, and equality. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, shit. I never knew Malcolm was speaking publicly against Eliza Muhammad. And that made it make sense to me because when people would say before that he killed Malcolm, I was like, yo, why yeah. would he? Because I thought it was a like a peaceful, almost Jay-Z versus Dame Dash wow. kind of split where only recently Dame started speaking bad about Jay. But no, for years, they weren't saying nothing about each but other. And I was like, that's Dame respect. Was, nigga, I remember years ago, Dame mm-hmm. was talking bad about Jay. Yes, well, know? no, I said he did it recently, in like the last five years or so. But for a long time, they would just kind of say we went off separate ways. And I thought that was more of the Jay, is still, Jay has not... 
I like her. Dame's name because Dame is beneath him. He's a not little fucking, bit. Yeah. He's not saying she hasn't said uh, shit about it. But Dame, every chance he can. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell who misses uh, school. <laughs> And I love Dame and what they built, but you can tell who misses oh, yeah, Sue. Boy. And that was kind of oh, how yeah, Malcolm boy. came off looking to me to where I'm like, damn, why you keep speaking that man's oh, name? Oh, no, 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 I disagree. But this was one. No, I and, I, and then I fuck with Malcolm, but I'm just saying I never knew he was speaking ill because then it made the whole thing make sense to me. Yeah. No, Elijah was, you know, I mean, it was Elijah's church, but honestly, Malcolm had the juice, nigga. Like the whole nation knew about Malcolm X and him being a ridiculous order, orator. And he was a threat to fucking Elijah. And if Elijah would have let Malcolm flourish, that nigga would have. Yeah, it felt like he would have been the first black president. Oh first. man, he would have fucking wings fly, bro. Yeah, MLK so, so they had on to as, get rid as of his uh, vice or something or yeah, whatever no. vice versa. It, they could have MLK, it. you know, acted right. Actually, before MLK died, he, he was started. your people's though. He was a preacher, so you, yeah, you're but not the, fucking with him. He was pimping, nigga. Oh, he was okay. pimping. Well, nigga. but but see, that, I can't fault <laughs> that man. I'm not talking about just bitches. Okay, okay, so I not only was was and I hate to fucking malign the, uh, these is the don't fathers, malign. yeah. So I'm not gonna malign, don't malign, but the truth is the truth, nigga. Mm. And the truth of the matter is Uh-oh. that this nigga, um, a lot of the speeches he had wasn't his. You know, a lot of the um, Ooh, MLK or Malcolm. No, 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 I can't malign Malcolm. Malcolm okay. is good, although I, Malcolm so you did, say did MLK do had some ghost homo writers. shit. Malcolm X did do some homo shit. Uh, I don't but know nothing about that. Yeah, we that can is talk JC about that. We, no, we can talk about that in a about second. That. But in terms of MLK, you know MLK. Uh, yeah. What is the word called when you? You're saying he plagiarized. He plagiarized. Come on, that's uh, I don't know about now. that neither. Yeah, that's common I, I, knowledge. I don't know about that either. But yeah, yeah. But I'll let you say that's yeah, your thing. Yeah. So what I wanted to say was, like I said, I didn't know he spoke against him. But here's the thing about leadership, and we'll see what you think about this. Mm. When I watched the whole documentary, you can watch it. Oh, I gotta watch it. Eliza Muhammad is speaking. Eliza can't be but like five foot three. The microphones were covering his face. And I'm like, somebody get that man a stool. He needs to be up higher. No doubt. So Malcolm, when you watched him at the podium, is standing above all that shit and looking out. Presence is an underestimated thing in leadership. Malcolm X has had more And as a short dude, I felt for Elijah. I'm like, hey, damn, show show him some love. He five foot three or whatever, but Malcolm a good six two. But what you have over Elijah is you have a high pitched voice. Hey, I don't know. And niggas listen to niggas with uh, a high pitched voice. Like Chris Tucker. Something about a high pitched voice. Come on, man. (laughs) You got knocked the fuck out. I think I seen you at comic shit. I was like, oh, that's fi-. I'm walking in the building. I'm like, oh, Phil's on stage. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> uh, Ma- Muhammad had a very low voice. He had no presence, no charisma. You Damn. know, it was like nothing. You know what I'm but saying? But the motherfucker built that, so he had to have something. Nigga, I, I don't know. I would love to know statistics on that, but I think Malcolm X is what really. Oh, yeah, no, he definitely took it to the top. He definitely yeah. took it to the top with the uh, charisma and being able to bring so in. So he was a Benedict and- Arnold to. to to, to, yeah, you know, like I said, was, I felt like ah, once I start seeing him speak bad about the dude, I said, damn, okay. I I I I'm not saying they should have killed him, but now that makes sense that they did, which is still fucked up because to me, even when you kill somebody, they live forever. You actually make them bigger than right. they were, right. which I think the best thing is to let somebody get whack. Right, like don't they, even utter their name. Like how people treat Eminem now, which I still fuck with him. The bars is still there, but niggas don't be like. But people yeah. on Twitter and shit be killing him. Like, oh, right. it's so whack, and it's like, yeah, but y'all don't know what Biggie would have sounded like on his tenth album. Right, you know what I mean. So, but he's not. But M is not even whack though. Yeah, yeah like, but you know we live in a fucking uh, what's the word? I can't quite pronounce it. Properly, uh, hyperbably, yeah. I don't know, hyperbole, yeah, yeah, bole, motherfucker. Nah, I know I said that wrong. But He's not even. I, I mean, accent. maybe the swag is not what it was when he first came out. Well, the or whatever, time is just different. Yeah. It's he's the same. He's still We're spin. different. We're different. <laughs> We're not fucking fifteen anymore. Right. People right, think right. that the artist changes. It's like no, the artist. It's right. the same. You're different. You got kids, nigga. It right. don't resonate the same. But no, I do understand what people say when he's when they say he's whack. When M came out, he had a recklessness about him that oh, was just hey. un. 
he Can still he has like a recklessness crazy about him. It's, it's, it's a not rapper the name. Set. Well, he's well, how many spit, times he can't. spits crazy, but he doesn't have that reckless swag. You, you can't no surprise more. people anymore. Is what it is. Like I said, your uh, tolerance for his shit is different. Right, right, right. To where your ear catch it different. But he's on a. Uh, it's a new rapper named Boogie. Dope. Okay. Got to check this motherfucker like out. Dude. But he got a song called Rainy Days and M's on it and M said. Like a shepherd having sex with a sheep. Fuck what you heard. And I'm like, right. bars. Right. That's a great metaphor. Fuck what you heard. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on. That's a double Fuck entendre. What you heard. Wow. A fucking double entendre right there in his he opening is, bar. And I'm like, that so motherfucker's great. still spitting. Is, you just oh, not the same spitting. no more. You he's not popping spitting. pills no more. You don't live in your mom's crib no more. It Neither don't feel do the he, same. And that's it, the problem. No, too. but his bar is the same. He don't pop pills either. If he popped pills, we'd be like, yo, and so you you like your artist near death? Nigga, you have to be lit, bro. Mm-hmm. I love all these celebrities that's messy. That's your job, nigga. You a celebrity. I don't want my politicians messy. I don't want right. preachers messy. And that's the weird thing. I we want started, celebrities we to be messy. We started treating nigga. everybody. Come on. We started treating everybody by that same standard. That's Come why on, what Snoop man. Dogg said didn't surprise me. I'm like, if the shit made you mad, throw a beat behind it. Yeah, and exactly. Right, and I that's agree. what disappointed me about the whole Malcolm thing was. It really got sad when uh, Betty Shabazz started speaking, and you're like, "Damn, they are asking her questions with microphones in her face." Literally five minutes after her husband got shot, and she doesn't answer like four or five questions, and finally she looks up, and it's just like, "Yo, the woman got like six kids. Like, let her live. Like, give her a mo- her moment." But I realized then when it was talking about the firebombing, and I think two things with the documentary. One is I think it's hard for people to grasp really in 1960 how much they hated niggas. Because people are like, even the dude that's doing the documentary as he's walking around is like, can you believe that they won't prosecute this man? And the dude that served 20 years in prison goes, yeah, I can believe it. He's like, they're white. They don't care nothing about us. I did 20 years in prison. And he goes, I didn't do it. And the man goes, you really didn't do it? And he looks back at him and goes, you think I would have survived 20 years in prison if they knew I did that shit? Mm. And he goes, then basically they let you know that the shotgun man, which I think his name was William Bradley, and then he converted and changed his name like twice to is something Islamic and basically walks off the scene and gets a bum deal, you know. It doesn't go down for that murder, but goes down for a bunch of other shit that he had done. And it's like, yeah, it was real easy probably for them to pull him in the office and say, look, do us this one favor and we won't send you to jail for life. Right. Dude comes back out into the community in Newark and like Ibrahim was saying before he left, he's a boxing coach and they gave him a this hero. This is the nigga who he pulled appears, the, tra- the trigger? Yes, that they said pulled the trigger. He appears in a Cory Booker... Uh, campaign ad for Cory Booker Bro, running for did president. Did he admit to doing it? He never admits it right but this was the tricky thing and I wish Ibrahim hadn't left because he's Muslim and he could probably tell me what it's called. They go to basically they go to Mecca and they cleanse right? And from my understanding and I could be wrong on this. My understanding was once they cleanse and change that name you almost are no longer supposed to ask them about that Man, and a few of, of here, the dudes man. in the documentary oh basically are damn near square up with the dude because he's asking them touchy questions about dude that allegedly pulled the trigger and the dude kind of looks at him and goes that's between him and Allah oh, and sorry. you let that rest listen I don't care about that first off that's bullshit I want to know did he kill the nigga that's number one number two I don't really care so much about the nigga who pulled the trigger I care about who gave the call now, Farrakhan was, again, on, um, I think the dudes, now I forget what the, what it, the show was in the 90s. He was with Malcolm mm-hmm. X's daughter. And they asked him point blank, that, 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 did you, da, da, da. and he said to the daughter, he turned to her and he said, if I, if I said any of the words that caused the death of your father, please forgive me. I am sorry for that. Yeah, he admitted to it, nigga. And they were basically putting a lot of propaganda out there, and that's why. So who I said, cares who actually did the pulling of the but trigger? They said the now FBI what I do want to know is that's what I want to know. Was of. it the fucking 
Fair, was it um, them niggas who, who gave it or was it the FBI? Well, I think it was both of them working together and saying oh, we have a not common not enemy not because J. Edgar Hoover hated us. I mean, Come on, he course, broke up the Panthers, course, CIA, all that shit. But that's so true. Now, that's I think so it was even, I well, think the simple fucking, solution was to let, blame the William Bradley character. But I think, like I said, the government put him up man. to it. Listen, they let a lot of you know for that was a great organization. I, I believe it when I when when Denzel said yes, that shit. It, it was, and that was what up. was amazing to me to they see Malcolm good, speak and mom. see like oh, a man. thousand black faces in the crowd, and I'm going, damn, they killed probably our most charismatic. Like One hundred with respect to MLK, which I feel like they're like Biggie and Pac, where it's like people could argue all day about who what, was better. What Malcolm was, was doing was making tactics. the shit more. He was making the behaviors and all the shit he was preaching more mainstream. So yeah. he was getting away from we not gonna work with you if you're not Muslim too. Right, you bringing black, everybody you in. Black, we gotta yeah, come. he was bringing and everybody that's when in. He would have been dangerous. And even with man. JFK, I'm like, <laughs> well, damn, they shot him in the head too, and he's white. Yeah. But like I said, with Betty Shabazz and them, they had firebombed the house, and I realized they did the same thing to MLK, and I'm like. Damn, he is right now. Even a clip of Malcolm saying, like, damn, they came after my kids. Like, I understand when y'all come after me, but my wife and my kids. Right. And I'm realizing with JFK, they never went after the women and the kids. They at least gave him that space of, like, we're going to blow your fucking head off. Right. But right. your wife and your kids can live. And, you know, what was it in the 60s that that Molotov cocktail that I'm like, what is the recipe? It got to be a little bit of racism. Like, you got to. Really hate a motherfucker to make nigga, that. Nigga, that shit was in every race movie. The Molotov Cup yes. that was in Remember That's Titans, nigga. I'm surprised <laughs> Justin Smollett ain't lying say they had ah, MAGA the hats. They had rope and Molotov cocktails. I would have said, damn. They that had was the, the classic Molotov. racist shit. Dude. That shit was classic. I didn't classic. even think that killed people. It just blew up like a window and it <laughs> yeah, fixed That shit was a symbol of hate. <laughs> it didn't kill people. We just want you to know. That we want shit you is like it. rubbing alcohol and, and, and a lighter and hatred. Uh, like That's the final ingredient. They, and everybody knew how to make them shits back then. Oh, yeah. Oh, it wasn't yeah. even no YouTube, no nothing. No Molotov cocktails. Cocktail it has the same look. It, it kind of was like a little glass bottle with like a piece of paper in yeah. it and some rope. <laughs> a bomb know, says, a bomb says military. Like you planned it out, but a Molotov is just random. You just happen to have some vodka yeah, yeah. and some rubbing alcohol and, and a Confederate person, flag. Whatever you got in your house. And like, like it. fuck it. Just household <laughs> hatred. Just spur of the moment. I'm finna throw this shit across the street because oh, they need to know how I feel about them. Oh, <laughs> that Molotov shit is deadly. Yes, sir. But shit, we gotta wrap it up, man. Yeah, shit, man. It, it's well, it's been fun, me, man. man. Uh, sorry that you got slapped in the back of the bus. That was so many years ago. I really was on the wife shit. Nigga. I just thought that was an epic fight because she went in. Uh, yeah, we can't go in to you, your wife fights. Though. Oh, well, that's too and bad. I mean, that bro. was her wifely duty. She was supposed. She to She was your supposed ass. to do it. And she was strong. She, she was really. Supposed she to surprised me. I mean, she was really getting me, but. You know, <laughs> She was stronger than you thought. She was stronger than I thought. I was she's like, oh, carrying she's them really collection trying to plates. leave me. She had the <laughs> biceps. I was like, she's, she's really trying to leave she, me. She looked around, but y'all didn't have no vodka. Or she would have molotov <laughs> your ass. Definitely. All right. Uh, it's oh, been an shit. episode of the motherfucking Tough Talk Podcast. Uh, JC Best, where can they find you at on social Man, media? JC knows best on Instagram, Twitter, and whatever else. And then uh, um, regular on Facebook, JC. Any Best. upcoming shows you want to plug? Yeah, man, I got a show at New York Comedy Club Sunday night. It's a dirty show. It's midnight, and I think this is something they're going to be starting on a, you know, I don't know, weekly basis. So that's a fun show I got. I got a show at Levity Live next Thursday. With, next Thursday. Yeah, okay, with cool. The American comedy folks, American me comedy folks. Okay, dope. Mm-hmm. Dope shit. Levity Live. Go check out JC Best. Very funny comedian. Uh, Per usual, I am Phil Hunt, all over social media, website, funnyphil.com. I'm going to be doing 30 minutes. I'm going to be doing a half hour in Brooklyn at Old Man Hustle. Nice. Wednesday. How Uh, is that spot? The new Old Man? New Old Man Hustle is dope. Uh, Shouts out to Ed Farrell and Carolyn and everybody over there. Uh, Yeah. Dope. Old Man Hustle in Brooklyn, Wednesday. That is the 19th. Yeah. 
Is it? Is that correct? I think I'm pretty Thursday, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's the 19th. Check that day for me. Yes, sir. Wednesday. Correct. So yeah, Wednesday the 19th, folks. I'm doing a half hour in Brooklyn, old man hustle. Come check that out. Uh, I don't know. You guys have been fun. Uh, thanks for listening. Like, share, subscribe, everybody.